It's a long season, they'll say. You can't get too high, you can't get too low, they'll say. That's a noble way to play for a championship, but each victory can also be the last one, and for some riders, it's a breakthrough they need to celebrate. And in 2020, several riders are hoping for that breakthrough, and maybe this time they'll realize that even when the wins seem easy to get, it's not something you can guarantee that's going to happen again. Welcome to episode three of the 2020 Racer X Monster Energy preview for Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIM World Championship. Jason Wygant, Steve Mathis, Jason Thomas, we are in the Pro Circuit Shop. Thanks to Monster Energy for helping open the doors to this place where all the great luminaries of the sport have come through to get their bikes worked on. We've already tackled several of the big names of the sport in the first two episodes, but I know you're upset that one rider that's in this show wasn't mentioned right off the top. And there are many other names that have established themselves because they won races last year. Did anyone have Justin Barsha, Blake Baggett in the who will win the first two races of the year last year pool? Was anyone thinking this? No. And remember those days where we had two of those guys winning the first two? And yeah. like, oh, who else can win? How and, long ago does that feel like, by the way? A long time ago. Yeah. Look, uh, Zach Osmond's in here, and he never won he never did win a race last year. And so, yeah. you know, we're not starting off with him, but he should have been in the other one. To me, uh, Zach Osborne, mm -hmm. title threat? Yeah, sort of. Winning races? Yes. Uh, he should have been in the other group. I, I don't know, Zach, oh, if AC's in the other group, then you should have been. So I tried everything I could do. I have a script right here, and I was supposed to talk about Barsha and Baggett, but you just can't get off the Zach O train. He was good when he came back. He... He had a few moments that you know weren't so good, but um, I think you know the injury impacted his pr preparation for the next for 2019. So I think Zach Osborne will be a podium threat. I think he gets a win next year, and and I don't know my current championship, but should have been in the other group. You're like a caged animal. Yeah. I just couldn't keep the Zach <laughs> yeah, yeah, within you. Yeah. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, Fly Racing, Maxxis Tires, LS2 Helmets, and Pro Taper Handlebars. Okay, I'll go to JT, who will probably at least talk about Baggett since you are. Somewhat affiliated with that Rocky Mountain sure. ATV MC uh, team. They got their first ever 450 Supercross win. You've been part of that team even as a racer for a long time. What was that like for them to get that victory? I honestly think it was a bigger deal for the team. Like, Blake was obviously really excited, yeah. right? A huge weight lifted off his shoulders. He'd been working towards a 450 Supercross win for a long time. But for the team, for Michael Byrne, they had been waiting for so long, and they'd gone through so many riders where they thought that win was coming, mm -hmm. and it just didn't happen. So... Uh, I know they were hoping for more wins in the 2019 season. Didn't happen. It's a really tough class, as you know, super deep. So you can't ever take wins for granted. But I'm curious to see where Blake Baggett comes in on 2020. Uh, he had a child this offseason. He was dealing with an illness last year that kept him out of the, the end of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. So it's been relatively quiet. He likes to go into this hunker down mode at his compound where last year we were joking he didn't leave the property for like 40 days or something, yeah. right? Which is yeah. crazy to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he kind of does this where he just gets there, he does his riding, does his training, doesn't venture out, and we'll see. So I'm as curious as anybody. I haven't heard a lot. I know he's been riding. I think he'll come out and do well. Uh, but I think it's a little bit of a guessing game as to what version of Blake Baggett do we see. Do we see one where, yeah, he was suffering from the illness and was struggling towards the end of the season? Or do we see the Glendale 2019 version where he looks like he's going to be a title contender? Well, my question would be, just like with Ken Roxham, is he healthy? They, they found the cure. They found what the answer was. It was sort of a lower Epstein-Barr virus. Right. Parvo, so, he said, which is your, okay. you and your dogs. It's yeah, a dog yeah. thing. Yeah, okay. so is he better? Well, and that's the thing, right? He didn't really start riding until November 1. Okay. So he took lots and lots of time off. Uh, like I said, it's been so quiet. I don't know if he's 100%. So until he gets out on the track and puts 21 minutes in the main event at A1, I think all of us are on the outside, and even though I'm an insider a little bit, I haven't really pried into the situation. I'm kind of letting them do their thing, and we'll see come Anaheim. They know the pressure's on, right? That's a, a well-funded team with big sponsors and a lot of expectation on factory equipment. That's all there. Everyone knows that going in. But as far as how that looks come A1, I'm sitting back and waiting just like everybody else. There is pressure on another rider. He actually admitted it to you. Justin Barsha won Anaheim one last year. So he wins what is essentially the most hyped, biggest race, most attention race of the year. Uh, then the results started to go sideways and he got hurt. The rest of the season was not good. And that's why that Anaheim one win for Barsha seems like it was five years ago. So you talked to Barsha just recently at the Geneva Supercross, and he was kind of saying, like, yeah, I know I got to ramp it back up. I, yeah. Yamaha was a great lifeline. They've done well with him. They rescued him from Privateer Island, uh, but 
he's got to start performing again. Yeah, I think there's no doubt you can see Dylan Ferrandez coming to that team in 2021, mm, right? Mm. I mean, that that's yeah. almost a foregone conclusion. Yeah. So Justin's in his contract year, and he knows that, and he's been in California all winter. Yamaha wanted him to stay there. Yamaha has made some staffing changes to their to the team that they hope are going to make the bike work a little better. Barsha was beat up last year. Uh, it was a wrist injury. It was a, a hand injury. And by the time, yeah. I mean, at some point when he came into uh, the opening round of the motocross series, he could barely hang on to the bike, and he kind of got slowly got better from there. So, yeah, it was a rough year for Barsha, but yet he won Anaheim 1, which is the race, you know, that you want to win, and it kind of got him back knowing on top of the podium. So, to me, I think the questions are about that bike remain, questions of the direction of that bike. Uh, so, yeah, but it'll be interesting. A motivated Barsha, as we saw when he you know, kind of was a privateer guy doing his own thing. It could be, could be a good thing. Yeah, that bike, uh, I know you especially love it as a production bike I, for the regular weekend I warrior type guy. And it is an amazing bike. Right. Yes. But at the 450 Supercross level, there has not been a lot of wind for that bike over the last decade since they came out with that new reverse engine. I, I know that Travis, yeah. Travis Preston got involved mm -hmm. he's, he's with the R&D department over there, and Chris yeah. Kiefer can talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, the guys, Aaron Plessinger and Justin Barsha, were off in left field a little bit, mm -hmm. they felt like. And so they brought that back. They did a lot of testing in the Nationals. So, And I, as I said, they added some staffing people there that are pretty smart. So I look for a better bike from the team in 2020. Uh, I'm going to thank our sponsors again. Monster Energy is the sponsor of that Yamaha team and this show. Thank you, Monster, for letting me do these videos. Yes, you're back. Uh, Fly Racing, Pro Taper, Maxxis Tires, and LS2 Helmets. Um, let's stay in the Yamaha topic. I like that. Let's send it to our man, Chris Kiefer, who's our... Bike guru with uh, Racer X. He's very familiar with the YZ450F. What do you think about that motorcycle? Okay. Konnichiwa. It's me, Chris Kiefer, over here in the lonely, lonely desk, pushed to the side because I'm the new guy. Those three have all the limelight, bright lights, and I probably got crappy lighting for my crappy face. But anyway, we're going to talk about the Yamahas. It's a tough situation for me to be in because I feel like the 20. 20 Yamaha YZ450F is the, the best production bike out there right now. But just because you have the best production bike doesn't mean you have the best factory race machine. And you're probably sitting there going, why is that? Well, I'm going to bring you in internally a little bit. Sometimes race teams do not start with a production machine. Sometimes race teams put all their race parts on a brand new machine. And when you do that, sometimes you start backwards, and then sometimes your riders aren't happy. So, last year, 2019, you can tell Barsha and Plessinger weren't very happy with their motorcycles. But, fast forward, now we're talking about Travis Preston. He is the R&D guy over at Yamaha. 2019 AMA Outdoor Nationals wrapped up at Ironman. What did the Yamaha guys do? They brought out their 2020 production machine, and they tested the day after the Ironman National. Two days in the rain, in the mud, trying to get dialed in for the 2020 Supercross season. And Travis brought some of his production-based R&D facts over to the race team, and it's helped. I've had Travis many nights over for dinner, and we discussed what the race team needs to do. Well, the race team needs to start with a production-based motorcycle and work their way up. Barsha, as you can see in these off-season races, he has been very vocal about how his bike is stock-ish. Always put a dash ish because it's not production, it has factory suspension, but the engine has been somewhat stock. Look how Barsha rides. He revs the beep. I would love to cuss more, but I can't now. I'm corporate. So he has a stock motor. He can ride it how he wants to. They tried to change Barsha. You can't change Barsha, people. He rides how he rides. So now he has a slower, air quotes, slower YZ450F, and he will go faster. So watch out, 2020, I believe in Barsha. Plessinger will have a better year, a better 2020 YZ450F, you'll see. All right, thanks, Kiefer. Let's keep it on the Yamaha topic. Aaron Plessinger, my goodness, a lot of hype coming into last season as a rookie, and he's so tall. He's going to be great on a 450 because he's big. There's no evidence at all that height matters on a 450. <laughs> Yamaha's 450 and 250 are the exact same size. Look at how big Cooper Webb is. Look how big Ryan Villapoto is. It doesn't matter. It was not good for Plessinger as a rookie. He uh, was hurt a little bit in the preseason leading in the last year. He started slow, and just when he started to show signs, he got hurt really bad at Daytona. Rest of the season, a wash. My favorite Plessinger story was when you said, hey, Aaron, I heard you had a rough offseason. Yeah. <laughs> he 
was like, Straight oh, up. yeah, did I Straight ever? Up. Yeah, he is the exception when we say that our 450 right. riders lose all personality. Right. There is the exception. Right. He's yeah. honest, fun, friendly. We want to see him succeed. He's got to do better than 19, man. That was not good. What do you think, JT, for him? I, I'm on the fence. Like, I, I need to see. This injury was bad. Yeah. And I, I can see this thing going either way. Yeah, it's a, it's a really critical year. Um, obviously, 19, as you said, didn't go anywhere near to plan. Injuries yeah. and just everything that could go wrong seemed to go wrong. Uh, so for him, I think he needs to come in and stay loose. He seems to ride best when he's himself he doesn't not feeling the pressure. He's riding how he thinks he should be. So that that would be my advice. If I was the, the Monster Energy Yamaha team manager, I would say, listen, we're here to have fun. Just ride your dirt bike, go out, do the best you can, because I don't think thinking about 2019 is going to do any good. Uh, the tough part, though, is we're going through all these riders. It's not easy, right? Where does he stack into this? For, you know, last year he was coming in with the rookie class, and we were wondering how he'd stack up. Now it's his second year. You don't want him to get into that sophomore slump. Uh, because it's only going to get tougher. You mentioned Fran is coming in. You know Barsh is motivated to stay there. This is a, it, you know, it's tough to say it's a really critical year and only the second year, but it certainly feels that way. But there is one weird X factor with Plessinger. Cooper Webb was in the exact same situation and then moved to another team and went from not doing so well to literally the Supercross Championship. So as much as for Plessinger, ooh, I got to perform for Yamaha, is it almost reversed in a way? Can Plessinger just say, ooh, I got a little twinkle in my eye. Maybe I'll just go elsewhere like Coops did. Do they have to impress him as much as he has to impress them? Because Cooper left and it worked well. To me, it just feels a little bit different than Webb. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, if Plessinger has that mindset that Webb, he, Webb is so headstrong. And mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying Plessinger's not that guy, but I yeah. haven't seen it yeah. where he's going to find a way to persevere no matter what, somehow, somewhere, some way. Uh, I just have this feeling that it's a really critical year for Plessinger to okay. get his head above water mm -hmm. and prove he can coexist in this 450 class. It is unfortunate for Aaron that just as he was coming around and showing a little bit of improvement, yes. was that crash in Daytona? If you remember, yeah. he had set some fast practice times. So yep. He looked pretty good. Yep. Yep. Kind of coming along when that crash happened in Daytona. So that, that's a, a terrible bit of timing for him. Well, Steve, it is now time. You've waited through exactly half of our shows, and we are finally there. Are you ready to spray some pump? Uh, I mean, I just did at the beginning Zach of the Osborne. show. Yeah, I just I, I, I think Rockstar Energy, uh, Rockstar Energy, Husqvarna, Zach Osborne. Uh, I like I like his work ethic. I like his program. I like this, obviously his speed. He's a you know multi-time champion now. Uh, got on the podium last year in the 450 in his rookie year. Missed half of the year. So, yeah, I think Zach Osborne will be a podium threat almost every weekend. And uh, you'll will he get a win? Probably. I think I think I would put him okay. on the list of wins, and I would put him uh, doing pretty well. Yeah, I'm curious to see what he looks like coming in healthy. Because mm -hmm. last year leaving Paris, you, every other word was Zach Osborne. When you're uh, handing your ticket to fly home, it was Zach Osborne. When they guy. asked you what you wanted to drink on the plane, it was Zach Osborne. <laughs> Literally the only word you knew at that point was Zach mm -hmm. Osborne. Then he gets the injury and everything changes. Yep. It sets him back significantly for the season. So yeah, I think we all are believers. Uh, you look at how his summer came along. He, in, he goes out and wins that moto at Southwick. Mm -hmm. That really changed the, the dynamic. So can he come in healthy? Can he really make good on the promise that he showed a little over a year Let ago? Let me ask you, Weege. When he came back for Supercross last year, what did you think? When he came back, it wasn't that good. Uh, because all that hype that you had built I'm up... I'm not talking about the very first race. I mean, as a body as a whole. Oh, well, look. Yeah. Outdoors was great. I'm not talking outdoors. Supercross. New Jersey was spectacular. Thank he you. could have, should have won New Jersey. Thank you. And all the rest of the races weren't that good. I disagree. I thought he really? was good. Yeah, I thought he was really? Good. I thought he was good. I, I think he, he had great starts. He was, but... he was coming back off injury, so right. I'll give that to him. Right. The New Jersey race was the one race in Supercross that it wasn't just Paris, but we had heard test track, flying at the test track, looking good against the other Bakers guys. So I don't know. Is he back at that level? New Jersey proved to me that he can do it, but it was only one race. There's only well, one race, Steve. I'm on the Zach Osborne bandwagon. These two are not. And um, what? go Zacho. I, JT's 100% on because what clothes does he have on? Fly racing. Uh, yeah, he's, I'm he's not even bad. sure how you could even utter that, but I'm not on the bandwagon. I want it to work. A, we all like Zach. He's Doesn't probably the only like rider we could. Like he's it. probably the only rider we or could be texting right now while we're doing the show, asking how he's doing. He would probably answer honestly. And uh, second of all, you can never have too many good guys. Having another guy in there that can win a race is going to make it spectacular. I just hope that what we saw one okay. year ago in the offseason finally shows itself in a Give Supercross race. Give me both of once. you guys. 
I think he wins a race this year, and I think he makes a lot of podiums. I'm with you. Give me, mm -hmm. oh, okay. So I was yeah. going to say, give me a percent mm -hmm. that he wins a race this year. Well, it's going to sound like a no, low number, which is going to annoy him, but I'm going to say it's less than 20 only because. What? Yeah. All right, okay. so hold on, hold on. We do this every year. We name all these guys going to win races. I don't know. You only get five a year, five wins a year. We've six. gotten six or seven right. before. So for Osborne to be one of the five to six, yeah. some of the other guys between Anderson, Tomac, Roxon. He's going to take Marv's wins. He's, he's going to take Marv's wins. Take, okay. take he's all of take Marv's, Marv's wins. Okay. Take all of Marv's wins. All of them. Roxon didn't win anything last year either. So is Roxon going to take Marv's wins? Uh, I think he will win a race. If he stays healthy over the next month, uh, I think he'll win a race. I don't think it's going to be you know, multiple, mul multiple wins. Like, you're saying he's going to get all of Marv's wins? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't but, think that's Okay, look what Joyce and Wachi did last year. It won a heat race, uh, set the fast times, ran yeah. up front, a lot, mm -hmm. of, lot of, you know. Mm -hmm. he, I, he never did get a podium, but his bike broke one race. And he got, yeah. And I think uh, Zach was in better shape than Joey. To me, Zach can beat Joey better than what we saw last year. In New Jersey, Joey Zach was showed Joey he was, was just as good as any of the elite guys. So I know it's yeah. in there. Yeah. But it was only one race. Okay. So, all right. I got it. Okay. There's right. a lot That's of guys fine. that That's were announced. We're going to pick fine. eight winners now. Eight, eight guys we can guarantee. Uh, uh, one more rider to mention here is the teammate now for Blake Baggett, Justin Bogle. He was on the team last year, but it was a late fill-in because Benny Bloss got hurt. Now Bogle is just signed, sealed, and delivered as a full member of the team. But he also had an illness dating back to the motocross championship. He actually told me it affected him for a lot of supercross. I think if I can get some uh, features done for Racer X Online and Racer X Magazine, Going to call it that? I got an illness. Okay. It's wearing these dudes out for one reason or another. Not, 2019 was the year of the illness. It was. We, we were chasing Bogle. We were chasing Roxon. We were chasing, chasing Baggett. Baggett. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Back on topic Roxon. with Justin Bogle. I don't know that it's possible to come into a season more underprepared than Justin Bogle was. Maybe Chad, Reed in, maybe yeah. Chad Reed in 2018 okay. would, be, would, fill, mm -hmm. would beat that. But... He was not ready. He hadn't ridden the bike. He hadn't tested. He hadn't trained. He hadn't done anything because he yeah. had just gotten healthy. He was just switching from a privateer Honda to the Rocky Mountain ATV KTM, right? Mm -hmm. So everything was changing. Nothing was ready. Uh, I mean, he was lucky to even be out there when it really came down to it. So I think you'll see a better Justin Bogle for 2020. The biggest thing he can do to help himself, which he's great at, is get good starts. He's incredibly good on the first couple laps. We saw him lead lead laps, even in going back to Red Bud, he led, what, half the race? Yeah. Uh, and even then, he was sick, right? He didn't feel like he was right. even near 100% uh, strength. So if he can put himself in position, I mean, keep in mind, this is a guy that almost got on the podium at San Diego. Yes, it was muddy. Yes, it was adverse conditions. But that doesn't matter. On, you know, on the results sheet, he was almost a podium guy. So I think if he comes in healthy, gets good starts, we'll see flashes from him in heat rates, heat races. That's a really positive thing for sponsors, and I think there's a chance for him to, uh, to surprise a few people at a few races. Yeah, it's one of those put yourselves in position, put yourself in position enough, yep. and one night it's all exactly. going to work yes. out. Yes, if you can, if you continue to do that time and time again, yeah. things will work out in your favor. Yep, and that has been the Bogle formula right. uh, in his 450 career, just hits on the right time. Um, speaking of hits, there is one rider who will not be racing at least at the beginning of the season because he took a big hit at Monster Energy Cup. A definite fan favorite is Dean Wilson. He's ridden the roller coaster like Bogle. He was a rock star factory Escobarna rider. He wasn't. Now he's back on the team. But you guys were there at Monster Cup. That was a big crash for Dean. It was. And, yeah, I've heard from some people close to him that he's shooting for an Anaheim 1 comeback. I don't oh, know if that's wow. possible. I know he's I've trying to get yeah. on the bike around now. But race? Yeah, I've heard that. But wow. uh, we'll see Dean definitely be building as he gets into the series a little bit. And mm -hmm. we're going to look like maybe jerks when he if he gets back and we didn't even talk about him at all in this series. But, uh, you know. Yeah, I just we think don't know starting off, yeah, I yeah. think starting off, it'll be it'll be a tough one. Unfortunately, though, for Dean, right. that has been the story every time. most seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he's not had many chances to come into a season 100. percent Unfortunately, 2020 will be the same. Uh, but I didn't know about the attempt at a one. That's pretty good news. If he could even just be out there on the bike and start working towards it, you know, that it, could win towards good things in February and March. Is there a bigger difference in the pits between teammates of Blake Baggett and Justin Bogle? Is there a bigger swing of personalities <laughs> I know. and sort uh, yeah. of, uh, f you know, just the, the way they act? Marv and Cooper Webb? Uh, I wouldn't even go there. No, no? I, I really? just think, yeah. I think, I think if you're Blake Baggett, look, you are who you are. I mean, I'm super good looking and super smart and all of that. So you are, yes. You are who you are in this mm -hmm. sport. But I do think Blake Baggett could benefit from being a bit more outgoing. And I think, you know, talking to the media more and, 
Because when he does do it, he's good. He's but good. I think, he I, think Blake being is, a I think Blake is looser behind the scenes than you're giving him credit for. Yes, but I want that to come out. In, in, in well, this is the 450 class. In front of fans. This I is the know. 450 class. These but, guys don't But do anyways, that. but yeah, Bogle's, Bogle's got that thing. I mean, Bogle's oh, yeah. as honest interview as there is. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, I just, I'm just, I just think it's funny. Those two guys are so totally different. They get along from all accounts. Yeah. They're, they're fine. Yeah. yeah. But uh, they are such different people to deal with. Yeah, yeah. Bogle is like, Baggett's like, I do all my work on the track. And Bogle, half of his, I think, uh, what he's known for for the fans is how cool he is off the track. Yeah. And he gets some results sometimes, right. too. All right. Interesting. Same thing with Dean. Dean's off the track game, dialed. Right. That, that helps. Uh, you guys want to mention this dumb fantasy thing you guys do? Pulpamex Fantasy, everybody, please sign up. You can play for free or you can sign up and pay a little bit of money, get a chance to win some motorcycles, get a chance to win 20 weekly prizes, season ending prizes. PulpamexFantasy.com, JT, it makes your Saturday night either fantastic or a complete <laughs> disaster. Either one, it's fun. It adds stress, but it also adds huge entertainment value. Um, like I said, the, the most fun for me is that it adds a lot of intrigue through the whole pack, right? Yeah. If, for me, I was a you know, 10th to 15th place guy most of my career. I used to have people hitting me up all the time about fantasy back in those days because there was so much riding on my position yeah. finish. So I think that's really cool. I think speaking, one of the best- Speaking of Pulpy, by the way, uh, the number one super cost fan Pulp Mix fantasy rider last yep. year was Justin Bogle. He was. He scored the most points. Whoa. Because Whoa. he had- Narrowly beating Kyle Chisholm. Yeah, because he had a high handicap, because obviously for JT talked about it not being ready. Yes. Bogle right. was a Pulp Mix fantasy king. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and one, of, one other thing we should ask, or add, even if you're terrible at this, which I usually am, there's a chance you could still win because we do a raffle, raffle giveaway. So all you have to do is sign up, pay a little bit of money, right? You still get a chance. So I think there's this misconception of like, I have no chance of winning. I'm not very good at this. You still have a chance to win a brand new Yamaha motorcycle, which is pretty cool. Can I play for free and win the prizes? No. I'm out. <laughs> and we're out of here. That's our show, uh, show number three. Congrats, Zach Osborne. We finally got you in. Should have been number two, Zacho, maybe show number one. I would love to see Zacho win a race, but we might be up to eight winners by the time we're it, done with this. I think it would look weird to start this, this series off show number one with Cooper. And, and Zach Osborne? <laughs> okay, you'll go that far? I will go that okay, far. Okay, you'll go that far. That would okay. be weird. All right. He, he, heck, we didn't expect Anderson and Webb to win the title the last two years. Maybe it's Zach Osborne's year. We'll be back for show four and five. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our sponsors, Monster Energy, Fly Racing, Maxxis Tires, Pro Taper, and LS2 Helmets.